Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Entitled People. Let's jump into some more Reddit stories. So be sure to like and subscribe, and let's begin. So for context, this person left a one-star review for a car dealership. So first we're going to read that review about what she said happened, and then we're going to read the car dealership's response, explaining their side. So Penny S. says, They called the police on me because they didn't communicate their guidelines for test drives. Two weeks ago was my first time ever going for a test drive in a new car. I came in, expressed interest in the specific model, and they were all for it. They took a photocopy of my driver's license, asked if I wanted the rep to come with. I decided no because I wanted to experience it myself, to see what the car could do. I had a wonderful test drive in a new 2022 Impreza Limited, with a friend. We were out for a full hour, maybe a little longer, driving around. It was a good time. I thanked the gentleman who helped me, told him I needed to think a little more and figure out some financing, and departed. Two days ago, I decided I wanted to try an Outback Limited and a Crosstrek Limited. Again, photocopy of driver's license and offered for a rep to come along. Again, I declined. They ended up offering me an Outback Touring XL with a turbocharge, because they didn't have the turbocharge limited. I accepted and we headed out. We ended up driving in an area with no cell signal, and since it was right around lunchtime, my friend and I decided to stop for something to eat in an area with no signal. When we came out of the dead cell spot, I found numerous calls and texts. They had contacted my home. They had contacted the police. The rep who let us test drive the car, a woman with a name starting with E, was furious that we had taken the car for two hours. I hadn't realized it had been that long, when we were only supposed to be gone for 10 minutes, something no one had ever told us. I was in shock and started bawling my eyes out. My friend had to do all the talking and got my boyfriend on the line to help me drive to the dealership without totally breaking down. When we arrived, there was a police cruiser there. My friend got out of the car first, as I was shaking horribly. I was so terrified that I couldn't stop crying. I just gave the guy the keys and they looked it over as their entire staff came out. I sort of just wandered as my friend told them clearly that we had never been told, either time, about the 10 minute time limit. The police officer called me over by name and informed me that the dealership could press civil charges against me as I continued to cry. The manager, I think he was dressed all in a black suit, commented that it was the most expensive car they had on the lot. I hadn't asked for that, I had wanted the limited, not the touring, and that I had put way more miles than I thought possible on it. At least their mechanic was semi-nice, just saying that he needed to put it on the rack to check it out. They even popped the hood as if to check if the engine was still there. I remember something about their parting words to me being something like making sure this doesn't happen again, and I swore up and down that this would never happen again, because I would never come back there again. I drove away, found an empty office space, and continued crying in shock and fear. Why they needed to threaten a sobbing woman who was already horrified about her mistake is beyond me. I ended up crying myself to sleep when I got home. If they have rules on what we're supposed to do on a test drive, I should have had to sign something agreeing to those rules. Some people might say that it's just common sense, but if that's the case, why wasn't I in trouble for being gone an hour two weeks before? If I had known the rules going in, I would have followed them. It just so happened to be that we were in a spot with no cell service. I didn't know, how am I supposed to follow the rules if they're not communicated to me? But now I know that I'll never return to this dealership. The only reason I'm still going to be getting a Subaru is because I freaking love that car, and I desperately want one now. Not only did they fail to tell me what they wanted, but they freaking bullied me and used scare tactics on me, when I was already shaking and crying after I brought it back. They'll never see me again. Now here's a reply from the dealership. Penelope, we thank you for your interest in Subaru. A standard test drive is only 10-15 to 15 minutes long, not 2.5 hours long. You went out for lunch, picked up your friend, went off-roading in a brand new vehicle, and added 60 miles to the odometer. Not to mention the dirt we had to have pressure washed off of the windows. That's not a test drive. We called you 15 times, sent you multiple text messages, and left you a voicemail, which all went unanswered before involving the police. At that point, since we didn't know where our car was, the best course of action was to call the local sheriff's department. It's unfortunate, but it was the only thing we were left to do, since we did not hear from you for hours. Good luck with your Subaru search. Penelope really had to try hard to make herself sound like the victim here. I find it hard to believe that they wouldn't have informed her that a test drive is only 10 to 15 minutes. 
That's why she was playing it up so much about how traumatizing it was for her. But it really is plain and simple. You disappear on a test drive for two and a half hours, you're damn right they're gonna call the cops on you. Kid Trashes Restaurant Entitled Mother Assaults Waitress Who Stopped Them So Crazy Karen is having brunch in a big restaurant with her family, but they're all complaining at each other. Amidst all this yelling and arguing, her eldest son, Moritz, eight or nine years old, suddenly goes ballistic. He punches his sibling, kicks his father and throws something at him, runs off, pushes a toddler in full gallop, and screams hysterically the whole time. He runs up to another family's table and smashes a plate to the floor, then proceeds to do that at half a dozen tables he comes by. If someone tries to stop him, he punches and kicks them, yells obscenities, makes shooting motions and screams, you're dead, you're dead, I'm gonna kill you, boom boom boom, intermingled with monkeyish screeches. Other times, he just throws whatever he can get his hands on at anyone who gets in his path. Within seconds, his pathway looks like the wake of a hurricane. All the restaurant watches in horror as Moritz, screeching like a banshee, grabs a tablecloth from the table row of an anniversary party of mostly elderly people and yanks everything to the floor, throwing omelets and spinach into the lap of an elegant elderly lady and sprinkling the expensive suit of her middle-aged son with some red sauce or beetle juice. At this point, a number of waiters are chasing the boy through the hall, trying to corner him. They nearly catch him at a narrow aisle between several tables, but he manages to bypass a towering waiter and briefly disappears under a table. However, it isn't long until he makes a reappearance at the other side and continues to demolish his way through the hall, screeching and knocking over two tables and any empty chairs in his path. A few guests join the hunt, although most people are still just watching in shock or with greedy excitement. Two unlucky patrons, trying to catch Moritz, get punched in the groin, kicked in the shin bone, and hit in the kidney from behind, when he agilely weasels around them and breaks free from their momentary grip. It's glaringly obvious, the brats got abundant experience in doing this. But what are his parents doing, you might be wondering? Well, certainly nothing helpful. In fact, they just sit at their table the whole time, and hardly even pay attention to his path of destruction apparently used to his antics, until the commotion gets so big that they can't ignore it anymore. But they only magnify it by screaming at the top of their lungs, blaming each other for his terrible behavior. From time to time, Entitled Mother turns her head and yells in her son's vague direction, Moritz, stop throwing things, or you little rat, come back here now. But she obviously knows jolly well the brat's going to ignore her. It actually seems to encourage him to go even wilder, and she only does it to pretend she's doing something. They don't even bother to pursue him. Such menial tasks are below them after all. That's work for staff and random patrons willing to help them. What am I supposed to do, run after him? Karen literally snaps at an elderly lady demanding she stop her kid for good, sticking out her foot in a four inch heel pump. The same patron who got kicked and punched by her crotch goblin moments ago, picks this moment to run through the aisle, trying to cut off the boy's way, and he's one inch shy of tripping over her foot. Mrs. Entitled shoots an indignant look and yells at him. He almost ruined her expensive shoe. Moritz notices the patron running towards him and doubles left like a fleeing rabbit, pushing over a chair in the man's way. This time, he isn't so lucky and lands on the floor face first. Two waiters are coming at Moritz now, and some folks are blocking the next aisle between the tables to his left. It seems like he's caught, but this brat isn't going to give up so fast. He quickly jumps onto the nearest table like a monkey and frantically kicks away everything on top of it. Dishes and cutlery rain down on the guests, forcing them to duck. A man from the aisle dashes over onto the table and reaches for his ankle, but has to protect his face lest flying cutlery and glass shards hit him. Moritz kicks out his face, and although he seems to miss, he succeeds to prevent the guy from snatching him off the table and takes a piggyback swing over the man's back, swiftly landing on the floor and dragging all the tablecloths within reach behind himself to impede the pursuit. When a stout middle-aged woman looking like a seasoned war dragon stands in his way, he pulls at her skirt and dashes through under her arms. At this point, Moritz has made full circle and approaches the long anniversary table row again from the other end. This area is very crowded, mostly by elders, and he obviously headed there on purpose, because it's really hard to chase him there. 
Moritz begins to drag down tablecloths off the row one by one, spilling everything onto the floor and the laps of some previously spared seniors. The entire brunch has dissolved into a commotion by now. All of the aforementioned happen in like three minutes, but the dining hall is an absolute mess everywhere the boy came through. However, he's so preoccupied with dragging down those cloths and knocking over tables that he doesn't realize a robust waitress in her 40s has snuck up on him. With one courageous jump, the woman manages to grab the wrecking brat into her arms, and she holds fast to him. May he wiggle, kick, spit, bite, and screech as he will. An elderly bystander rushes to her aid, firmly securing the kid's feet to prevent him from kicking out. Moritz is nine at most, but he's astonishingly strong for his age, and fights like a madman determined to break free. Now what does his mother do? Mrs. Entitled, who certainly had no intention to run after her son while he was demolishing his way through the restaurant, now clacks over to him as fast as her high heels allow her. Not to help the waitress though, mind you. No, to slap her, while the other woman is still holding her crotch goblin, who's fighting with renewed resolve. Entitled Mother pummels her, pulls her hair and claws at her face with her inch-long nails, calls her names and threatens to kill her for hurting her son. Somebody drags the mother away but she keeps kicking the waitress in the back and tried to kick the man who's pulling her away, accusing the waitress of battering her poor little boy, who by the way was a little rat moments ago. When he furiously refused to go back to mommy, somebody threatens to call the police, but apparently nobody does until they're gone. Once Crazy Karen and her crotch goblin are free, she simply walks out on everyone, still screaming at the staff and some bystanders, insulting them and threatening to sue the restaurant. Yup, she wanted to sue the restaurant. You can't make that shit up. Naturally, the crazy clan didn't even pay for the brunch, much less the damage caused by their brat. This only dawned on the waiters a moment later, because they were still too shocked when they left. Some went outside to stop them, only to see their car disappear around the corner. They called the cops, but something tells me this had very little consequences for her. Okay, that was absolutely insane. And also pretty enraging that they actually got away with it too. I would say that someone should have called the cops earlier, but like Opie said, it all probably happened very quick. And that's going to be it for today guys, thank you for watching. Be sure to drop a like, I'd really appreciate it. And also subscribe to the channel for more. So I'm out of here, take care and I'll see you next time.